Kessler and Morgan Webb. Hello and welcome to x -Play, the show that brings you brutally honest game reviews. Today we have our review of the biggest PS2 game of the year, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Now you've heard the hype, you've heard the controversy, now it's time to find out if the game is actually any good. But it's not all about Grand Theft Auto. It isn't? Well, actually, it sort of is. We do have a review of Capcom's quirky alien game Under the Skin. And another Vietnam War game. Another one. I know, seriously, enough already. <sighs> but we begin today's show with the first part of our Grand Theft Auto San Andreas review. That's right. This game is so epic that we had to review it in two parts. So escort any small children right out of the room because this one is for the anarchy-loving grown-ups. Here's part one of our review of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Attached. I'm gonna it just is? guess that it's attached. Oh, it, I never get anything around here. Yeah, neither do I. Well, we'll have part two of our Grand Theft Auto San Andreas review later in the show. And in it, we'll be covering the soundtrack, the minigame, the multiplayer, and much, much more. Yes, she said multiplayer, GTA multiplayer. But first, let me say that the supply line mission in San Andreas, that's the one that we showed you with the little plane going zzz, zzz, is insanely frustrating. These are the worst controls maybe ever. <laughs> now, see, I had to play it about 20 times to beat it, and the whole time, David Cross's voice is just yelling at you. Stupid toy. What? Plane? Why can't I just beat someone up instead? Yeah, beat someone up. Well, yeah. you know, with numerous beatings, the GTA series has always been a major target of opponents of violent video games. I don't know why, but some people just can't get past the whole killing hookers with a baseball bat thing. So 2001. I know. But it's not all negative. We've learned other valuable things from the Grand Theft Auto franchise. Including some important life lessons, like these, which come to us from G4TV.com's Tina Wood. Enjoy. It's good to know that America's youth is learning about proper hooker etiquette from this game. And that you should stay away from burning cars because they can explode and kill you. Yeah, I don't, never would have guessed that. Well, don't go away. We have a bunch of excellent stuff coming up later in the show. Yeah, I love excellent stuff. Stuff's good. We do have part two of our Grand Theft Auto San Andreas review, but we also have a game from Capcom that features one of the strangest appearances of a Resident Evil character ever. Well, aside from the giant rubber nemesis monster in the Resident Evil Apocalypse movie. Ooh, it's true. How exactly did that get made again? I'm Noah Jovovich agreed to take her clothes off again. Oh, right. Good <laughs> web. Welcome back to X-Play. Later in the show, we have part two of our review of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, the biggest PS2 title of the year. But first, we have a truly weird game from Capcom. It's not quite Katamari Damashi weird, but it's close. And since Capcom is the developer behind the Resident Evil franchise, there's a little in-game cameo for fans of that series. Here's a review of the truly weird Under the Skin. <gasps> yes, in case you were wondering, that was also Jill Valentine from the Resident Evil series and the zombie and the mama. Neptune Sharks. You know, it's a shame the game wasn't better, because there are so few unique titles out there. Games like Pikmin and Space Channel 5 and Prapa the Rapper, and most recently Kadmar Dimashi, the game made by people on very strong drugs. And later in the show, we'll have part two of our review of GTA San Andreas, where you can beat people up who sell very strong drugs. Oh, I love beating. They're fun. Well, let's do one. Okay. Wow. The television screen is the retina of the mind's eye. Welcome back to X-Play. War. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Except making first person shooters. True. Yeah. Apparently the endless glut of World War II games has finally forced developers to abandon the beaches of Normandy and the snow-capped fields of Stalingrad. Well now developers are setting game after game in a quaint little place called Vietnam. What you say? It's not a popular war? It's not a war we really want to be reminded of? Well, tough. Because Ben and Valor is only the latest shooter set in the era that gave us uplifting fare, like the Deer Hunter. And it's not even the most vulgar or offensive Vietnam game. Now that honor goes to Shell Shock Nam 67. Oh, and Viet Cong Purple Haze. Mm -hmm. So, how does Men of Valor, the latest Vietnam shooter, stack up? Find out in our review. Remember the last time I got a morality lesson in my gaming? Well, Grand Theft Auto 3 taught me that if someone gets in your way, you should run them over with your car. But I guess that seems a little ethically murky. Well, we'll be learning much more about the ethics of Grand Theft Auto when we return with part two of our Grand Theft Auto San Andreas review. I have a feeling it will be violent. And it will be hookers, and profanity, and rampant crime, Ooh, rampant and, and, crime? and some other stuff. Welcome back to X-Play. This is it, part two of our review of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Yes, we are at last passing judgment on the biggest PS2 game of the year. Now, for those of you who totally freaked out when we gave GTA Vice City a mere four out of five, yeah. we want to remind you that there was a reason it didn't get a perfect score. Yeah, it wasn't random, funny that. It had mm -hmm. bugs and glitches and aspects of the gameplay like the targeting system that were utterly frustrating. So have these problems been fixed in GTA San Andreas? And what's up with multiplayer? And how hard does the licensed soundtrack rock? Find out when we complete our review of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. 
love the explosions and five out of five. Are you people finally happy? Because we are. Yes, but we live to disappoint. That's true. There is so much to love about San Andreas. There's San Fierro, which actually looks like San Francisco. Now, in case you're wondering how the multiplayer works, you just hit the multiplayer icon and a second player can join in. And if you want to see what we gave the other GTA games, why not read our book? I can think of a couple reasons. Well, yeah. There's words in it and it's hard. Yeah, I know. I, I, I got stuck on this one. It was, it was kind yeah. of long. But you know what's kind of neat about the book is what's you can that? go through it. And I realized that we review games that I didn't know we realized, like La Puchel Tactics. Who played that? Write me. <laughs> Somebody played it? Really?